Good morning guys, Dan with Pain Free You. Today's topic, how does pain become chronic? And the answer to this is extremely critical because how it goes from a little twinge in your back to chronic is the identical reason why you can't get rid of the pain and why you're stuck in the pain and why no matter what you've done to try to treat it, whether it be physical remedies or you know these emotional cures, the Dr. Sarno type of TMS healing protocols, um, the reason pain becomes chronic in the first place is also the very same reason why you can't get rid of it, no matter what you do. So the difference is basically this. It is, oh my God, versus whatever, I'll be fine. And you're probably saying, what? What is he talking about? The significance you place on the pain and your reaction to it determines whether or not your first instance of pain becomes chronic or not. The body heals. Three, six, ten weeks, the body heals. However, if it becomes chronic, you reacted very significantly to whatever caused the pain in the first place. Now sometimes, you know, it, it feels like an injury. I bent over. Oh, my back went out, right? Feels like an injury. You talk to a doctor. Yeah, you pulled your back out. Hmm. I still haven't seen a scientific explanation as to what it means to pull your back out. Um, Sarno used to say, Dr. Sarno used to say that our back is one of the most, um, how did he put it? I think he said something that the back is so um, wrapped up in tendons, ligaments, muscles, that how does it jump out? How does it, how does it go out? Um, so there's no scientific explanation there. So back to the whole thing about why chronic pain becomes, or why pain becomes chronic. You get pain, it can be bad, and through fear, focus, and anxiety, it becomes chronic. You got that? That's the whole, oh my God, I hurt my back. Oh, it hurts so bad. Then what else happens to lock it in is you start to go to doctors. Maybe you go to your general practitioner like I did. He says, yeah, you, you know, you pulled your back out. He gives you some muscle relaxers. Two days later, you're no better. And you say, well, doctor, it's not working. He says, well, try a chiropractor. Go to this guy. And you go to the chiropractor. And he lays you on the table while your back is in the middle of a spasm. And he twists you and he turns you and he pops you. And hurts like crazy. And you walk out of there feeling no better. As a matter of fact, I felt way worse. But yet, I went back to the chiropractor again. And again, and again, and again. Went to a physical therapist. And what did they do? They printed out a uh, photocopy of exercises, back stretches. Well, they barely knew what caused my pain in the first place, but they said, oh yeah, you got to do these stretches and exercises. So I was given the same exact cure as virtually anybody else who walked through their office with back pain. Needless to say, I wasn't smart enough to ask him how many people does this work for. I just took the exercises and tried to do it. And while my back was in spasm, I'm laying on my floor trying to do these stretches, which was just causing it to hurt worse. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, right? Oh, hurts so bad. What's going on? Nobody could really explain it. Um, so I went for an x-ray. You have evidence of, uh, what do you call it? I am still asleep this morning. It's early. Um, uh, evidence of arthritis. Um, spinal, uh, I don't know. Basically, the spine wasn't perfect, but they said, well, it's, it's not that bad that you should have this much pain. Anyway, so again, the reason my pain became chronic was because I freaked out about it. 
and I went from doctor to doctor to specialist to specialist. Nothing worked. And uh, here I am, you know, 31 years old. And I thought, oh my God, I got these back problems now. What the heck am I going to be like at 50? And I started projecting these visions of the future of being in pain and staying in pain and what this pain meant to me and all the things I'm not going to be able to do throughout my life. Oh my God. The pain was so bad that, look, it, it even affected, you know, the bedroom activities. I mean, it, it was not pleasant. I would lay down on the floor and then couldn't get up. I remember crawling up the stairs one time to go to bed, literally crawling, and having to stop twice on the way up. It wasn't that big of a stairwell. Um, so our minds can really get ahead of us with the, oh my God. Now, on the contrary, if I had just taken a, uh, whatever, pulled it out, the body heals, I'm not worried about it. Just kind of breathe through it, relax, kind of turn down my reaction, then uh, probably would have done a lot better. So that's how it gets chronic. But the same reason is why many of us did not get better for 13 years for me. And why you may not be getting better is because if the meaning of this pain is so much in the oh my god territory and never in the whatever territory then that may be why you're stuck you're thinking about your future of pain you're thinking about i can't even work my life is over i can't even work now I got financial problems and I'm paying all these co-pays for all these treatments or I'm trying this and trying that. I've read every single Sarno book and every other one about tension myositis syndrome and diversion pain syndrome and I've hired these coaches and nothing's working. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So you're freaking out and you're still freaking out and the meaning of this pain has taken on so much significance in your life that it becomes who you are. It's almost like your identity. I am the person in pain. This is me. And what I'm here to tell you is the pain is not terminal. The pain is not forever. I'm proof. Been out of pain for almost 10 years now. Um, and I can do anything I want. Literally anything I want physically. Anything. No problems at all. So if you knew the pain and you truly believed the pain was nothing more than your brain's attempt to distract you from your overwhelming emotions and that it was benign meaning it doesn't leave any permanent scars would you be afraid of it would you place that much significance on it and I, I did a video previously it's on my youtube channel the Dan Buglio channel about Pain is like a rubber snake. So somebody throws a rubber snake at you, and what do you do? Oh my God, and you freak out. And then you look at it and go, oh, that's not real. You jerk, right? And then that's the amount of significance you place on it. So what I'm encouraging you to do is look at your symptoms as the rubber snake, as something that is scary as heck initially, it doesn't mean anything. It can't harm you. I won't say it's fake because the pain is very, very, very real. But it is not dangerous. If you've had pain for years, think about it. You're still here. You're not dying. You just got a lot of pain that's caused by a distraction process. So, same reason that pain becomes chronic is the same reason why you may be stuck in pain. And now there's this whole talk on uh, the TMS groups or the Dr. Sarno type of groups. Ignore your pain. Mm, impossible. Sorry, you just can't do it. When your pain is screaming at you and it feels like a knife digging in your back. Telling someone to ignore their pain just makes them feel like they're not good enough to even ignore their pain when somebody told them to and then now they get even more self-critical that I don't know how you do it I can't ignore the pain don't ignore it don't even try acknowledge it okay sit with it 
But there's a difference between acknowledging it, sitting calmly, doing some deep breathing, noticing it, kind of watching it, versus laying in bed, freaking out, and just projecting all of these horror movies in your mind. You're watching this movie spin in your mind of a future life of pain, misery, disability, lack of money, inability to work. So if you're watching these movies over and over again in your head of all of the things that are wrong with your life and how your future life is gonna be dictated by this pain and these symptoms, I'm here to say you're living in the, oh my God. So don't ignore your pain, acknowledge it. Say, wow, there's a message. What is the message saying? Look over here, there's emotions that you have been trying to avoid for weeks, months, years, decades. We've been taught to ignore these emotions. We've been taught to lock them away, repress them. So don't try to ignore your pain, it's impossible. Don't punish yourself because you can't ignore it. There's another term, outcome independence. Become outcome independent. Do this work. Do Feel your emotions regardless of whether or not you're getting any results. Eh, that's also kind of really, really hard, if not impossible, to do. Of course we care. Of course we want the pain to go away. Of course we want to have a good session of really feeling our emotions and soothing ourselves afterwards. Of course we want the immediate result. But to punish yourself, to fly back into you know, this pit of despair, if it didn't work that first time you tried it seriously, or the hundredth time you tried it, um, and react with all of that significance and weight on the pain just not getting better, that's only gonna lock it in more. So as much as you can, and I know this is very challenging, take a whatever, yeah, whatever attitude about your symptoms because you are not damaged, you are not broken. The doctors don't know what the hell they're talking about by saying, look at your MRI, you're gonna be in pain forever. Well, that's another reason why pain becomes chronic because you have all of these authorities, these doctors with medical degrees and white jackets and all this importance telling us, oh yeah, oh yeah, look at this MRI. This is why you're in pain. Okay, doc, what do I do about it? Well, it's not so bad now, but eventually you're gonna need surgery. Spinal fusion, you're gonna need surgery. Oh my God, holy crap. Because we all know somebody who had back surgery and then they've gone back for back surgery number two, three, five, or seven, right? lifetime of disability. So these authorities tell us that we're broken and that we're gonna have a lifetime of pain. And in some cases, they'll actually use these words. You better get used to it because I don't see a way out. Oh my God, right? So how dare these doctors, first of all, for giving us this life sentence of pain? Because even though physically they're wrong, physiology-wise, they're wrong emotionally, by putting us into this, oh my God, significance mode of reacting to the pain, they can actually be right unless you learn the reality of the pain and realize that it's not the physical structure that's causing the pain. Look, maybe you know a couple percentage of, of people, it is, but you're not that person. The odds are in your favor, 98 to 1 or 93, 97 to 3, that you are not that person and that the findings of your physical body are the innocent bystanders. They are just what a doctor can hang his hat on to say, yeah, that, that's where the pain's coming from. Yet there could be millions of people with your same exact spinal structure, same exact physical challenges or abnormalities, normal abnormalities, who don't have pain, don't have the same kind of pain, or had it, and through this work, doing this distraction pain work of shifting to your emotions and not focusing on the body, have gotten better. So, 
If you want to get out of pain, don't ignore it. Don't be outcome independent. Be aware of it. Notice it. Sit with it. Acknowledge it. There's a strong message there that there are certain parts of your life that are not working. There are certain ways of interacting with the world and your emotions that are not working. So view it that way. But when it comes to the physical body, take a whatever standpoint. You know, start there. Start turning down the volume on your reaction. And this takes a little practice. You know, let's say you get up in the morning and your back is screaming at you. Okay. Whether you react with fear, anxiety, overwhelm, and freaking out, or whatever, here we go again. Pain's still there. Pain's still the same. And truthfully, which way will you do better going throughout the day? Uh, okay, here we go again. I survived yesterday, I'll survive today, whatever. Let me shift my focus back to my emotional world. What's going on with me right now? Besides the pain, which I know are consciously, I know what I'm feeling about that. What else is going on in my world? What am I freaking out about? And so shift your focus back to the emotions. Take a whatever approach towards the pain and the symptoms. And you'll find that the volume of the pain will turn down compared to a day where you just freak out from morning to night. Try it. You may find that this losing significance of the pain and going to a whatever approach will really, really help you start to see a future that you want. And shift your focus not only to the emotions, but shift your focus to what you want. Because I talked about in previous videos, neuroplasticity, the neurons that fire together, wire together. So the more you are in freak out mode about your pain, the more you are telling your brain, keep on firing these signals. So whatever, let me go back to my emotions. Let me soothe myself. Let me focus on a life I want. What do I want to create in my world, in my life? Start wiring those signals together in your brain. Notice the pain. Don't try to ignore it. It's impossible. But keep on shifting back to what you want. What life should be like. What you want it to be like. Stop watching these horror movies called The Screwed Up Life of Dan. Right? Shift to your emotions. You can do this. So, with that I'm going to say goodnight. Or not goodnight. Good morning. And uh, hopefully you found this helpful. But don't freak out. Oh my God! Never helped us. So... Whatever.